so let's walk through what uh, how this sort of comes to life here in OnePlan. You've seen some of the screenshots, and let's sort of dig into that a little bit deeper. So I'm in a OnePlan environment right now. Uh, I'm on our on the home page. I'm, I'm looking at. I can see some insights, some projects I've been to recently that I'm going to use in this demo. In fact, it's some other things that I might need to know about stuff that's coming up that's due and so forth. So nice quick home page. I wanted to start there, but I want to drive into a couple of areas that Jim talked about, and I'm going to sort of set the stage to start quickly with this concept of strategy. So here I have my objectives. So we've we've captured in this solution a set of objectives, or seven there, that, that we want to accomplish in this particular sort of fictitious calendar year. And we actually, at one point, actually use this. This is how we plan out our own year. So we've set up a set of objectives. They're linked, you can see, to, to different business units, so we can sort of have that linkage there. And then underneath them, we've articulated and captured a set of key results. What are the things we're going to do that upon completion or achieving that result, we will have achieved the objective? So we now have this OKR model. This one's fairly straightforward. It can obviously be a lot more complex with multiple layers as necessary. But here I can quickly articulate what are the things that we're trying to do this year that we're going to measure, and those will accomplish these set objectives that we want. So we start with that articulation of strategy. And I want to show that because in a minute you'll see how then we link this strategy or connect it to our execution. And Jim talked a lot about that in some of the SPM type slides uh, and stuff earlier. So let's look at sort of where that comes from. So it's important to understand the strategy at the start. Now into the portfolio itself. And so in here, the, in our portfolio, we have actually two portfolios of projects. And underneath those, we have a series of programs and then projects underneath that. And I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. In this demo, we're looking at how we've melded together both methodologies of, of, of agile type approaches and, and traditional waterfall. And you can see them both here on this screen. Underneath the program that I'm highlighting, you can see we have, uh, what is it, four projects and two epics. So within that, pro that program, some of the initiatives are being done in a waterfall fashion, and some are being done in an agile methodology. One of them, the support customers using mobile, is actually hybrid in its own right. It's hybrid inside of a hybrid environment in that it has both a project file or project desktop uh, project desktop capability here and a schedule there, but it also has content connected to DevOps. So it has it is being driven as a waterfall project, but within it are aspects that themselves are are agile in nature. So it, it's sort of its own sort of case study itself. So I have these different projects and I could quickly come in here and say, I want to create a new one and I have the option, am I going to create a new project or am I going to create a new epic? Is what I'm about to do going to follow a waterfall approach or is it going to follow an epic or an agile approach? Now, if I dive into, I want to spend some time on a specific uh, epic around DevOps. So this particular project, cleverly named Azure DevOps, is in fact an Azure, it's an agile project that we are managing in here. So as you can see, when I land on the details page, you can see the governance structure sort of following a, a lean portfolio management approach. Uh, it, so it's very oriented around that. We've captured some specific data here about the project. We've got story points, epic, you know, schedule and start and so forth. Things that you would typically see if you're planning on an agile initiative. What we also have is up here, it is linked to one of our specific objectives as well as one of our key results. So the completion of this project or this epic will help uh, achieve that associated result and ultimately contribute to the accomplishment of that objective. So that's the first sort of example of that linkage between the strategy and in this case, an epic project or an epic, an agile project. So then what Jim talked about is that concept of consistent resource planning, uh, financial budgeting and status reporting and some of those core components. So while I intend to do this project uh, using agile tools, and in just a minute I'm going to show that, I do want to actually sketch out and sort of understand the resourcing demand on the overall resource pool of the organization. So I'm participating in providing information that a PMO or a portfolio manager needs to know in order to plan where resources and teams are being deployed because some of these resources may send some time on an epic and sometimes on a project. Uh, they may be in different groups and so forth. So we have one common resource pool, the people that work here. So now how are we going to deploy them? And so in this particular case, 
I'm articulating what are my commitments or my, my requirements, if you will, for executing this, this initiative and where do they fit. And as I enter in the hours, you can see it immediately tells me that this individual is over allocated and so forth. So I'm gonna to have to work through some of that and engage resource managers to figure that out. So I immediately have that feedback and I'm, and I'm participating in and providing information to the overall organization. I'm not operating in a silo because my PPM tool doesn't support the, the methodology I want to use and the tooling I'm using, we're not incorporated. No, in this case, we very much are. So next I can go and look at this from a budget perspective, same concept. So if I come in here and see my budget, I've pulled in some of those resourcing costs. I can just come up here and say import costs from the resource center. So whatever I had just done, I could bring into here. I've got some other costs and things that I've captured uh, that I'm managing. So I can create a budget. I can pull down actuals maybe from an, in an integration point with a financial system. I could continually forecast how we're progressing. So I am, again, participating in the management of the portfolio uh, in, in the same structure that everyone else will, even though I'm going to execute with one specific methodology that may be different than others are using. So I have that budget and that resource planning. But when I come to the work plan, now it's an agile structure. So now I am pulling this data from Azure DevOps. And so I've pulled in the entire epic here and I can now manage it. We have this capability, you see the icon showing up there. I can load up the, t the task or I can load up the user story. And I actually went ahead and loaded all of those. So I have them all three here. So I've, I've sort of clicked on that ahead of time. So this is my epic in DevOps. So all of the standard things that you would want to manage uh, in DevOps that you would be traditionally used to, they're all here. But what's also here is sort of through the looking glass. Now I'm looking at that same one plan information I just showed you, but I'm seeing it from the DevOps side. There's that same resource plan. Uh, the same financial plan, uh, that's a scheduled resource plan in this case. There's the, the budget that I just showed you, the work plan itself, and the details, that linkage to the strategy. It's all here. So if I'm managing this epic in DevOps, I don't necessarily have to go to one plan. I can actually have a complete view of the exact same information and, and the same UI to go and provide that information from within DevOps at the epic level. Now, if I want to look at it, the user story, I have all the user story information, same concepts. I really want to spend time on the task. Is in the task, I can, you know, the sort of standard items you might be tracking related to this particular task. But down here, we've added in this capability of a work log where I can, on a specific day, provide the amount of effort I put into it. And that feeds back to the timesheet in, in one plan. So from inside, DevOps, I can actually start to status the tasks in my timesheet. Even though that capability doesn't natively exist in DevOps, we've added that in as part of this integration. We had a couple of customers asked for this and it made a lot of sense to be able to bring this work log capability so that they can continuously update and, and sort of add aspects to their timesheet so that when they go to do a timesheet, a lot of that data has already come over from doing it here where they're spending their time and where they're working. So from, a, from an epic perspective in one plan, we can participate in that common resource sort of planning and, and commitments and, and forecasting of requirements. We can provide budgets and track that information as we see fit. We can align to strategy, that's critically important, yet do it in the context and the other information that we need in an, ag in an agile methodology sense with, with story points and so forth. Uh, and its own governance structure, yet still participate in that. Lastly, we can go and do status reports. So I can create a status report that gives the core information that I need, uh, have past status reports and so forth. So I can provide status on the progress of this initiative. So all those core things, I can still work the way I want, I can still do the things I need to do in DevOps as we always do, yet I participate and view and see the information that I need, as well as be a part of the portfolio and provide the information that the portfolio management needs. Now, if I come over to the portfolio, I'll just grab this project we use all the time. We'll go and look at this one in a more conventional sense. Same idea is here. Again, I have, whoops, I clicked on that twice. Here, I have another alignment to objective. I have key results aligned elsewhere in here as well. I have a different governance structure. This is gonna follow a more conventional waterfall approach. 
I have all the information that I need to capture about that and some status data that I'm rolling up. I have a resource plan. Again, I need the same resources that that other project does. This one has a lot of resources in it. So I've forecasted out what my commitments would be in competition, in essence, with that other project. But this is now we have common information so that our resource managers can make, inf make informed decisions with a complete and total picture in one place. Same with the budget. Same concepts all play in. I can bring that, that resource data in as well as the other costs that we might have and be able to participate in managing this case budget and actuals and being able to communicate that information so that we know where we are in terms of all up investment and budgets. And in this case, the schedule, now this one has both, but I'll sort of focus on the project side of it. This one's connected to Project Pro. And so in here, if I just blow this out quickly, you can see it's a conventional project schedule with milestones and tasks. And we're bringing that in here so I can manage this project in this format if I so choose. And I'll just sort of close the story as well, is I can do a, st a status report and provide that core information. So common source of status information, common uh, engagement of the resource pool and planning of resource requirements, common strategy for managing budgets, uh, alignment with strategy where, where we need to in a common format, and yet the ability to execute in very, very different ways as per what the, the project and the team needs. All that leads to the ability to have this quick status information on the screen. It leads to the ability to do things like trend analysis on the data. So I can quickly see how are these projects performing. You can see the epics and the projects are in here. They're each of their own line because we're pulling that common information. Maybe I want to view this differently. So maybe I want to go to have a look at this in a board view using a business unit. Then maybe add in uh, a lens on this to be uh, sorry, a team project area and be able to view what each of the different teams are working on across these various projects, maybe move a project between them, switch teams and so forth. Uh, maybe I want to be able to view all this in a roadmap. I can see my roadmap here. Maybe I want to switch that around to look at uh, a different sort of lens on that. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. Well, it'll work too. I have different pivots. Some of those projects represented there by those Gantt chart lines are epics and some are, are, are waterfall projects. Yet here they all are, and I can see how they overlay, how they interreact, quickly see what the overall health is of them, and see how they fit in this case by program. And then I can bring that full circle, come back here, and I'm going to do project prioritization. What I can also do now is have a complete picture of what the costs are, the alignment to strategy for everything, regardless of whether it's an epic or a project be able to do some prioritization uh, and, and maybe look at that against budget, sort of a classic sense, right? It's here's my 20, uh, 2022 budget targets. I've got some months where I'm over allocated. So I can start to look at how I might, if I zoom this out to quarters, how I might move some projects around and perhaps delay a project to see how that helps me with my budget. I actually made that month a little worse. Then I can start to look at what projects I might drop we got a proposed one in here. Maybe we take a couple out and see how that helps us. The one that's on hold will keep on hold. We're getting closer. I won't work this all the way through, but I'm ignoring whether or not those are epics or projects because they're both here. To me, they're both initiatives that I need to, uh, they have a common, they're gonna all hit the same resource pool. They're all sort of tapping into the same funding. So how am I going to prioritize and let the teams execute in the format and the approach and the methodology that they need to or they want to? based on the type of project they're doing. So we can bring it all the way to here. Uh, finally, I'll end on just sort of some dashboards. Oops. Now my reporting, all the rich data that we've accumulated is now brought to me in, it's here in, that I can look at all of it. I can see my portfolio summary. I can drill through to the portfolio details on a particular portfolio and start to dig into all of that information. Inside this data, are both epics and projects being executed ultimately in a variety of tools in the back end, but participating in the portfolio and enabling me to have this rich analysis, this rich data all in one place. So we're able to bring two approaches to look to, to achieve a common goal or a common set of goals 
in one place, in one plan.